Good morning and congratulations. You've made it through another work week. I don't know what that looked like exactly for you. It might have been a difficult week. Others might have said, man, it's been a God week. It really has. God has shown up and showed out in so many different ways. But regardless of how your week went and how that's affected you, I pray that God's Word has spoken to you daily. As I said yesterday, the lessons of, for this week are timely. They're also very difficult to deal with in the current context that we find ourselves. And so we're wrapping up today, reminding ourselves that ultimately how we relate to those in authority over us reflects on who, who Christ is in our life. Remember, the theme kind of the week is reflect Christ and how you interact with all authorities, all authorities. And so today we're looking at verse 5, which tells us, Therefore, you must submit, not only because of wrath, but also because of your conscience. It's funny because if you remember, I ended yesterday with that question, when have you tried to get away with something but you got caught? And it kind of goes along with what I've heard people say before, well, it's only wrong if you get caught. Well, really? You know, it's, it's only illegal if you get caught. I mean, that, that doesn't that really doesn't make rational sense if you think about it because it's not illegal because you get caught. It's illegal because it's wrong. You know, it, it, and of course... I'll indict myself on this one in terms of how, the rate of speed we drive. You know, it's illegal to drive over the speed limit because the speed limit has been established as a means of protection. Those who are in authority over us, those who have knowledge and awareness of how cars interact with the road and, and what speeds are, are comfortable there have set those limits based on that. And so when I violate it, it's not just a matter of, of violating a standard and it being wrong and a fear of punishment a ticket. But it's also my conscience should say, hey, not only are you violating man's standard, but you're also endangering yourself and those around you. And that can be true for so many different situations. Trespassing, for instance. Well, it's only wrong if you get caught. Well, no, it's not. It's wrong in the whole sense of being wrong. And of course, we don't know what might lie beyond that that might endanger us or if we're taking somebody else with us, endanger them as well. Paul also brings up a great point here because it all relates to the idea of conscience. Um, and, and we know that as we were created in the image of God, everyone has some aspect of conscience. Of course, as believers, we have the Holy Spirit, which is better than any human conscience, but that it awakens the conscience. It, it intensifies the conscience to, so that we move beyond the fear of punishment for our motive of obedience we go over to the part of righteousness as our motive for obedience. We want to accurately and consistently reflect the righteousness of Christ in how we live. Not live out of a fear of being punished for violating, but live out of a desire for righteousness is why we obey. So that's the proper view of it. And Paul says we do it for conscience sakes. Because, I mean, you think about it, how many times as children, because we had been um, disciplined, we did know that rules were a certain thing and we should do and shouldn't do certain things and we did it. How many of us it just tore us up? And that's, that's really how our parents found out. They could tell that our demeanor had changed. We had a different disposition. And of course, the observant parent can look and say, you know, what, what's wrong? What'd you do? You know, they can, oh, you know, what would it become quiet? I mean, you know, all the different symbol, um, indicators, parents, we pretty much know what to look for, right? And so today, Paul reminds us that we should not live uh, in terms of how we relate to authorities simply out of fear of punishment. That's not the Christian um, motive, and that's definitely not a Christ-like motive. We should also remember that we should live out of a sense of, of, of appreciation that government has been placed in a position for our good. But ultimately, we should live in such a way that our conscience can be clear in, in the presence of man, but more importantly, before God. He is holy. He is just. Now you may be thinking, well, Brent, I thought my sins have been forgiven. Well, if we've confessed those sins, God is faithful and he is able to forgive and cleanse us. Absolutely. But we still have to live sometimes with the ramifications, the outworkings of our actions. And that's where that conscience comes into play. So today, um, the question kind of goes around, you know, this idea of, hey, how can I live my life in such a way that my conscience can be clear? Not just that I avoid punishment for violating man's laws, more importantly, that I represent faithfully the righteousness of Christ as I seek to live out, live through his nature and through his character, because ultimately that must be our motive. Well, looking forward to Sunday. I will not be with you this Sunday. My family and I are going to have a little time of vacation away before school cranks back up. 
But I'm excited that Brother Aaron is going to become a very capable teacher. I know he's going to do a phenomenal job. He's going to continue looking at the book of Acts, continue in chapter 3. So please be praying for him now. Come expecting to get fed the Word of God because he loves the Word and he's faithful to teach the Word. And I'm just excited to have him as a part of our team. But until we are back together, I just want to encourage you, as always, to remember, live sin.